And I, I wear this Viper stuff all the time. <laughs> Just so you know, it's not like I'm doing this for this, you know. You're I lying. Walk the, I walked a dog in this. I do my chores in it. All, I have a lot of awesome. paper shirts and hats and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are live now. And so for everyone that just joined in, um, everyone knows the wedge in Newport Beach is one of the most famous body surfing breaks in the world. And today we're lucky enough to have Mel Thoman here, who's one of the locals there, grew up body surfing at the wedge, and he's going to just share some of our stories, his stories with us today. So thanks, Mel, for coming. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, sharing some of your stories. So I guess just start, let's start with, um, you know, for people that don't know about the wedge, what makes it such a special wave? Um, and what, yeah, what makes it so unique? Well, the, the main thing that makes it unique is the is the angle at which uh, south what south swells do south the jetty faces south southeast and when the direct direction is right it creates the wedge effect and the peak and i think you know the addictive quality i mean it, it is an addicting place for some people yeah and other people just you know it's like the, not their cup of tea but for body surfing and stuff it was like wow you know this is the place to be but it I think the intensity, even when it's small, it's intense. And I think yeah. that for me, I think that's always been the draw to have that, that rush and that. Would you, know, would you it say it's pretty it's, unpredictable? Cause I've seen some, you know, some stuff <laughs> that's happen. another thing, it, you know, <laughs> it, the wave, you know, all waves, the ocean keeps you on your toes, but I think mm -hmm. the wedge especially has that, capability of just throwing weird stuff at you you know with the backwash mm -hmm. and the angle different swells create different angles off the peak and there's a whole variety of things that can go you know happen and so you know it's a, it's another thing that to, to constantly go there and you're always challenged you know yeah. that's what's cool too i think the challenge <laughs> so how big does it get there and when the swells are really big um, I've seen it, I've witnessed it probably 40 to 50 in the face on, on the biggest I've ever seen. Um, I think the biggest I've been out there is 35 to 40. Definitely. Wow. Um, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. To think about that, to think about that, like Fred Simpson always says, you know, in the continental U S this is like the biggest wave you could ever, you know, uh -huh. it's like. On in the continental U.S., this is the biggest wave you'll find. Yeah, and um, that was kind of before they found you know Mavericks was going on. It's funny because um, uh, what's uh, what's the guy's name that started um, that's first started riding there? Uh, Jeff Clark. Okay. Jeff Clark started riding alone at Mavericks in 1975 when I was like fully addicted to the wedge. That's when I was. 75 is when I just like, I had to be there. And how old were you then? I was 17 or 18. Okay. So I just started college in the fall of 75. And I mean, I had, I have no idea how much money I spent on gas. And <laughs> even though it was cheaper back then, it just, um, and then Greg Dietz, it turns out Greg Dietz and I lived close by. He lived in El Segundo. So then we started carpooling. Wow. so that helped but it's still it was still like um looking back it's i just can't believe that i was working night crew going to college going to wedge then i started in a band i was in a band with terry wade and had a girlfriend down in costa Mesa. it was just like i look back and i just go what how the hell did i do that <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm so tired now. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're taking breaks now. And are you still like, I mean. As much as I can. As yeah. It, are you since, still going you know, down big? Like, I mean, a 35 foot wave. I mean, oh, yeah. Crazy. You know what? Um, I'm smarter now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, if the thing is, though, if, I've always preached that if, if there's good shape, the size really doesn't matter. Yeah. But physically, I can't really um, 
I can't really, I'm not capable of being out there on massive days like the young guys. I mean, they're, you know, it's their time. It's not mine. Right. But, um, if it's really good shape and I'm in, and I'm in decent shape and I've had like a week's worth of waves under my belt, it, you know, um, 20 in the face, 25 in the face. I'm, I'm cool with that. As long as if there's shape, if there's no shape, I'm just right. like, I'm not, I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> I've done too much of that. My most of my life, you know, cause wedges, for the most part, it's a close at it, you know, for, right. for body surfers, especially you don't often come out of the two. Right. It's, you know, <laughs> So I know there's a big culture, you know, at the, at the wedge. So like, what was it like, um, as you know, as a 17 year old, 18 year old, I know you have some cool stories, you know, as the crew that you guys built there, like what, yeah, that, is it, what was it like growing up there and going there and, and the well, crew? You guys um, have. the fact that I just kind of graduated my way down there because I started at toes. Then I ended up at El Porto and then Man Manhattan beach pier and all these guys body surf there at the pier. And then I'm they're going, you got to go to wedge. And I go, yeah, I got to go to wedge. And I didn't know I was going to get, you know, like addicted and stuck. But then when I got there and I saw all these body surfers, it was like, this is so cool to me. That was like, I never saw body surfers hardly ever up, yeah. you know, where I grew up. And uh, I get down there, I was like, oh, God, you know, and then they were really into it, like I was. It was like, this is cool. And then I didn't know, like, um, earlier when I'd gone down there and finally got a, a real swell, I stood on the beach for like an hour and a half, and I watched guys who eventually became my best friends. Wow. I watched the guys who knew what they were doing. And I was going, okay, so, you know, I knew, I, I thought I was really, really good, but I was... I was nowhere close to what I, you know, what I thought I was, <laughs> this goes, you know, and yeah. then that group, um, I don't know. We just, it, it just gelled. I, um, a big part of it was I brought, um, my dad's movie camera down because my dad took movies of us all the time, like with regular eight and then super eight. And I documented all, you know, growing up as a kid, our skateboarding days. And, and then, um, we had this mountain biking activity with these beater bikes, but we had these great mounds and stuff. We, we, we unfortunately didn't film that, but um, I filmed the wedge that would eventually became like the crew. Awesome. Um, and we would go to Terry's house or one of the guy's parents' house, you know, and we'd sit in the living room and watch, and set up a screen and whatever. And we'd watch the films. I, you know, would get developed and and then um it's weird how there was guys from pasadena that that just got addicted just like me and they drove just as they drove just as far it was like certain i don't i don't know if it's certain personality or, or people that like to be punished a lot <laughs> but we all ended up like being really close friends and then if the waves weren't there we'd go on road trips <laughs> <laughs> and we threw these freaking parties that were just, God, we should all be dead. We all should have been dead. Like, you know, we thought before we were 30, <laughs> so much, so much, you know, it was just nonstop. Yeah. Sounds amazing and fun. It really, and, it really was. I mean, And you guys still all hang out now. Only like we only on special occasions, yeah. um, like Fred's 80th birthday is this March, March 6th. Wow. So March 10th, we're having a pretty massive party at Malarkey's. And the Malarkey's is like the, the one okay. of the wedge crew bars that we've oh, okay. they've been, go, been going there since 77, I think. 77, 78. But yeah, we're having Fred's 80th. So I surprised him for his 70th, which he didn't, you know, he was like, oh my God, Mel had a great <laughs> cake. And then his 75th we had here at my house still had a lot of people. And now I, you know, now I call him and say, Fred, you know, you're turning 80. We, we got to do this. And, um, you know, he said, so case, you know, huh? just want to tell people in case people don't know, Fred Simpson started oh, Viper and, you know, just, start, yeah. Um, let's see. We test piloted Vipers in the early eighties, like 81. Okay. Yeah. And, they were the double blades and the first ones, the 
the blades would all get chopped up, looked like shark bites. <laughs> and then the rubber, the rubber got better and it was just, it took off from there. And then Hal Handley from Boomer, mm -hmm. um, who's, who's actually a real scientist who studies, you know, cures for cancer and rocket science. He's a, he's a genius, but <laughs> he told Fred, he goes, Hey Fred, you know, why don't you put some color on those things? And the, they started, he just did the yellow splotch. And so when the color got on there, the boogies said, Hey, these are pretty cool looking. So then, you know, then Fred had like a lot of people that were marketed to instead of, cause body surfing, you know, is pretty small, pretty small world as even yeah. now. And what yeah. was available then for fins before Viper? Fins, when I first, okay. When I first got to wedge, I had these really, what I thought were really cool, stiff, stiff blade Churchills. Okay. And when I got to wedge, all the guys to a T had blue, black and blue duck feet. Okay. And so I just immediately got a pair of those. Cause I, you know, like I said, I saw the guys who were doing it right. And, and were those designed though for body surfing or were they designed for bodyboarding or what were they? Doing? Oh no, bodyboarding wasn't even, uh, even around Okay. Pretty cool. much then. I, I I can't remember when they first came out, but the um nobody was bodyboarding. There was guys some guys on belly boards and then of course Romo and a few guys, Bill Sharp, Romo and others were on knee boards, and then Danny Kwok and Al Lehman were two guys who uh, were on surfboards. So all the rest of the guys were just the, the blue duck feet was the fin of choice. Okay. Um a few of the older guys that that were before me in the sixties, they had UDTs. Yeah. And then there's a few other, other fins sprinkled in, but mainly blue, black and blue duck feet. And those things really, really gave us a lot of scars and bloody feet. <laughs> and we were all kind of proud of that. Yeah. Uh, but eventually we were like, you know, maybe we should have a padding and, you know, be more comfortable because there were some, we called them craters and they, some people would get just ultra deep and our feet would be bleeding and, you know, but that'd be, you know, we were kind of stoked too. It was like, hey. Yeah. It's your like war scars. <laughs> yeah. And my feet are still like lumpy bumpy and you can still see the scars from, and those are from the blue ducks. Okay. So. Cool. You know. so tell us your best moment at the wedge. What's your best wave, best moment? Can you think of one time? I'm sure there's um, one. I remember, see, I used to, um, because it was so many good body surfers in our group got bigger and bigger, mm -hmm. I used to take out, like, weird flotation devices. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was outside sitting on uh, one of my old Mel rafts. We called them Mel rafts. And, um <laughs> you know, this, that, or the other thing, but, um, I got this massive, massive peak and for, instead of, it, it didn't close, it just kept going in this tube. I remember it got bigger and bigger and I was like, wow, this is, it was like everything is in slow motion. I was like, this is a really, really huge tube <laughs> and, <I was> like, <laughs> and it's still going. And I went all the way down to cylinders nice. and nobody, I was usually the only one who ever filmed the super eight mm -hmm. and it was, I think 77 or so. And Romo wasn't shooting uh, photos yet. So back then there wasn't many, um, right. unless I was filming, there wasn't much captured and Dale Kobachich um, was on and on and off. Yeah. But that was one of the things. And, and uh, one of the most impressive things I've ever seen was uh, a dolphin. We were, it was low tide. We were, a, a set came in and we were caught inside and we were swimming out to the peaks. Mm -hmm. And this dolphin shot through the peak, I mean, out of the water at the very tip of this massive wave, dove in and then just cut across. And I was like, oh my God. And I started yelling into the beach for Dave <laughs> to get my movie camera ah. to see if he could, you know, film in case he did it again but dave couldn't hear me and then some yahoos on a little dinghy came <laughs> came in too close and scared off the dolphins so i was like oh, crap but, but that it's was those moments that are the best of being out in the water it's things huh? like that it's 
That's yeah, what, that that yeah. always stuck with me because I thought, you know, if you could be anything for as a body surfer, a dolphin, yeah, it would be my choice right. because they rip. You know, yeah. they can they can hold their breath a heck of a lot longer than we can. Yeah. So if we ever actually come back like reincarnation style, dolphin. I'd wanna, I'd wanna be the <laughs> dolphin. Yeah, sure. That'd be the key. And then uh so going the opposite spectrum, what has been your scariest moment um at the wedge? Um luckily I've never had I've never been too close to drowning. I've been okay. scared enough that I thought I would when I was like caught inside with sets coming in yeah, and not if I go deep enough, but um, I did almost get knocked out once I hit. It's always the small days that people get hurt really bad, at least in the crew. Uh, <laughs> I got hit. I, I just bounced my head off the bottom somehow at the end of a wave. And um, I came up and it wasn't quite black, but it was like, like weird looking. And then, and then it turned like everything turned pink and then it turned orange and then it started getting back to normal colors. And I saw these little stars all over the place. <laughs> and I was like, God, I really hit my so head were you hard. And then on the beach at that point. Huh? You, like... No, I was, I was out pretty far still. You were. Okay. Um, I, I just looked at Terry and Romo and I was like, oh, God, you guys look weird. <laughs> 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 I, I might've, I might've had a concussion. I don't know, but, um, I do remember one other time um, I I cracked my tailbone a, a titch. Um, I somehow, I remember it was a hurricane swell in 2011, August, I think it was August 5th. And I, I, was, I stay in the, t because at Wedge, one of the things I, I learned very early on, and Fred Simpson was kind of the pioneer of this, was the Wedge guys, if it was hollow and they were in the tube, they never pulled out. They just kept going. Okay. They just used the use your speed to just go until until you're just rolling around in foam. <laughs> so I go into this tube and somehow I ended up like in a in a sitting position facing <laughs> the beach. And I just landed flat on my ass. So it was just like and then I got an x ray and there was a crack. I was like, oh. hey, I, I cracked my ass. So, <laughs> so See, it, luckily it wasn't too bad. I was only out of the water for a month and a half, two months, but I missed a really, really good swell. Yeah. I ended up taking, I ended up taking photos on the beach with my wife's really nice camera. So, so that, was, now that you're, you know, you're still going out and you have a family and a daughter. Does, do you still, do you go out with your daughter? Has the gene, has it passed? She's, you know what? I've taken her down there many, many times and she was in junior guards and stuff. Mm -hmm. And when she was in junior guards for those, for two years, when she was uh, nine and 10 or 10 and 11, I got a ton of wedge time in, but, um, she's, I've, I've never really let her out. Yeah. It was just too, I was just like, God, you know what? If she got hurt, it just it would just kill me. My wife and even though my wife's brothers, that's you know, I, I always remind her, I go, you know, we never would have met if we hadn't been for Wedge because your brothers started riding there and blah blah blah. But anyway, okay, I'm I'm cool that she's, you know, she loves it. She loves the beach. She loves the ocean. Yeah. Um, but she loves volleyball a lot more. <laughs> Luckily. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I'll ever let Venice, our daughter, go out at the wedge or, you know. I, I don't know if you, if, if they get addicted to it, you know, I just, I would say sure. Yeah. But it would still be, I'd still be in the back of my mind going, God, I, you know, just wouldn't want them to get hurt. Yeah. Scary. But when you're out there yourself, you don't really, it's, you don't even think about it. It's like when I was at a pipeline, whenever I'm out there, the, the water's so clear and the reef looks so close and I never hit it, you know. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's one of those things you just don't, you know, it's, but I wouldn't, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be nervous to her yeah. if she really got stoked on it. Watching on the outside, but yeah. So as talking about that and as people that are watching us now and are going to be watching this interview, people that have never been to the wedge and may want to come by as someone a first time, um, 
going there, what any advice you can give to them or feedback? Are they allowed? Is it is it locals only or no, no, it's it's not locals only, but um obviously if there's waves you have to have fins, the lifeguards won't let you out if you're yeah. if you're finless. Um but I would suggest um observing like I did way back when. Mm-hmm. And you can you can tell who the best guys are, who the guys who know what they're doing, whether yeah. whether they're bodyboarding, surfing, because there's tons of surfers now. Um, skim, you know, if if you're a skimmer, there's great skimboarders. You know, you wa- if you watch, if you have half a brain, you can watch. <laughs> and ho- I tell my daughter this: I go, you should be able to learn. I go, life's about learning. So, What's well, my quote? It's life's about learning, li- living, learning, lo- living, loving, learning. And having fun, <laughs> so <laughs> so I go. If you don't learn, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like you should be able to watch, yeah, and and then hopefully, you know, you can kind of get a picture of. I mean, if you if you if you have some experience too, you you it'd be smart to have some a, a fair amount of ocean knowledge, wave mm-hmm. knowledge, to really want to tackle sizable wedge. But there's, um, you know, smaller days, there's just some really fun, fun side wave through the back door. Those are really fun days. I yeah. mean, but they can still hurt you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, the, like you said before, like those days, you, more people like get hurt or, you know, I'm scared yeah, the, to go um, regardless of well, the size. Uh, the, the baseball strike in 1981 uh, was one of the first times the LA Times came down to do a story on they called us the real boys of summer and <laughs> mike the only quote that came out of my mouth that was in the paper was um on big days you drown and on small days you you get hurt like broken bones and necks and things yeah. like that because that's really the you know it's kind of it's kind of true to this day the, right. the, if it's huge it's it's more about drowning but if it's right. if it's in that mid-range you're, you're dealing with a lot less water and gotcha. really hard, really hard sand. Yeah. So. so speaking of the LA times article, I read it and uh, something that I thought was interesting that you said, um, or that they, they, you weren't quoted, but it, it said that you said um, that you thought the attempts to organize the sport of body surfing has been pitiful. And that was back in 92 do you think it's still that way? Do you think it's growing? Um, how is the? I, you know what I've seen? Um, a lot of pro surfers are like, I guess they like the underground aspect, and it's definitely, definitely grown and yeah. more organized, and more people. I mean, you know, that's thinking about the thing about the hand planes. Um, that has really grown yeah. exponentially which is cool because I always said, you know, um, maybe we should call it hand surfing because we're planing off our hands yeah. more so than our bodies, unless you're proning it or, you know, you don't have your hands in the water, but <laughs> at wedge, it was always, th- it was always think about speed. Yeah. And the more uh, we said, the more lift you have, the more speed you get and hand plane, hand planes also, show beginners that you need to plane right. off the surface of the wave to get more speed and more speed equals more lift, more, more control. And you can do more stuff. Yeah. You know, we do more, you know, whether it's spinners or, or uh, up and down and all around, it's just, uh, it's, you know, it's physics. Yeah. It's, it's allowing people that haven't, you know, that aren't, well enough surfers or swimmers or you know that aren't and it helps it helps, it helps you it, get in get into it yeah and that's another thing it helps you get in but you know obviously fins first and then yeah. you know with planes um you can actually dig in and pull more water yeah but the actual i think what i thought was really cool about hand planes in general is it gives you that concept in your head of of actually planing with your hands yeah. on the surface of the wave, which is, you know, it helps and it, and it, um, it's real yeah. fun. It's very functional. 
Do you ever use hand boards at all or hand planes or? Yeah, because people send me them a lot and um, I take them down a wedge and I mess around with them and they're, you know, almost every plane I've ever used is, is great for sideways and back doors. That's mm -hmm. a little different when it's really, really big because yeah. I don't, I'm not, you know, comfortable taking on, <laughs> you know, <laughs> trying, trying out different stuff, but the, the planes are just for back door wedge. You can do planes are just awesome. Any, yeah. almost any type of hand plane, you know, your, uh, your, your McDonald's trays, stuff like that. Yeah. That's, it's it's good stuff. I mean, your slide handboard is just perfect. And you know, another thing about the hand planes is getting in earlier. Like if it is big, yeah. and the waves are right, you can get down the face quicker on big peaks, which right. is important for body surfing. You need that speed. Yeah. So cool. I'm a you know, it's funny because Deets. Deets had gone to Hawaii and come back with and said, Hey, this guy, this big Hawaiian guy, big moat guy, Jeff Noah was using these, um, speedo hand planes, you know, and this is 74, I think <laughs> 73, 74. So he and I were using them in 76 at the wedge yes. and we used them through 77, but on the big days we kept sliding out, you know, we'd take yeah. off. And go down and then, and it was just like, God, we're really messing up or we don't know what we're doing. And it turns out we didn't use them for years after that. And then like early eighties, we brought them back mm -hmm. and um, like 83. And we figured out that if, if you go straight down and then cut, you actually like, it's like a miniature bottom turn. It'd be like a bottom turn for surfing and it's set up a full speed run through the tube and down, you know, just boom. Nice. And it was like, it was like coming off the back door with that much speed. And we're like, Oh, okay. This do it this yeah. way. Yeah. So we kind of, we kind of, you know, we learned, we figured out, Hey, we can use these on big days and we can, you know, do, do what we want, what we were like in our heads. We're thinking we should be able to do. Right. Instead of, slide, instead of sliding <laughs> out and just eating it. There was a lot of that. <laughs> I so, bet. You know, you I'll can never fun. stop learning, you know. If you do, if you do, you're probably dead. <laughs> All right. Well, we have one more question. It's already been, I think, 30 minutes. So oh. lastly, do you see um, any for, foresee any trends for 2018 and beyond for body surfing and where do you think it's going? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a contest guy, so I never, mm -hmm. I never have been. We, it was like one of this weird thing we had as a group saying we, we just, you know, we just love the purity of it and we'll, yeah. you know, expression sessions are cool, but you know, but there's, there's always going to be body surfing contests and that's cool. And, yeah. and I like that. I mean, you know, that brings what is cool about them is it brings all these body surfers together. Oh, yeah. And that I think that's really neat. And um, there's, you know, there's always room for for growth. And we are there's you know, what's really different now is the Internet and this kind of stuff. And, you know, we're in touch with guys from Australia and so cool. Brazil, there's, you know, because there's, you know, it's really cool that body surfing is worldwide. These guys, like the guys, uh, Nick and those boys, and the boys down in, uh, we're in the Wawa hand planes or whatever down yeah. in, uh, uh, riding slabs, body surfing. I mean, that's cool stuff. Yeah. And, um, because I mean, you know, Wedge and Boomer, we've been doing it for a long time. And Boomer is basically kind of a, a cold point panic right you know but it's a big right and it's on it's over rocks and um but yeah there's it's cool there's body surfers everywhere now it's like it's like yeah and uh guys like Kal um kalani latanzi mm -hmm. i mean he's going he's going out of nazareth massive yeah. nazareth so yeah. with just a pair of fins you know that guy is that guy's yeah. badass <laughs> yeah. um he he's gonna be a wedge someday he's gonna kick butt yeah. If if we have a swell, you know, it all, you never know when, you know, yeah, really good swells can give it. 
I think it's so cool, like the connections everyone makes through just the sport. Then you know, yeah, and, um, and and you know, get to know each other. This, and yeah, so and you guys, out. and you guys got on um, Shark Tank, right? Yeah, the, the yeah. slide. That, I mean, that's you know, that's just really cool. Yeah, I think that you know, and it it kind of shows the sport is is growing, which is good, and it's it is worldwide. And more new fins are being made, like uh, Stark. Starkey made the, the Yakas. Those are great fins. Yeah. Um, there's great people in the sport, you know, just really nice. And, yeah. Um, there's, there's really, it's just uh, down to earth. I mean, you know, the, and the ocean, the waves, they're very humbling. Yeah. <laughs> you got to admit, it always, my ocean will always win and kick your butt. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, but it's, it's a, I don't know. It's, I just still love it. I just tell everybody, you know, I, I'm, if you got the stoke, you, you'll, you'll mentally, you'll be young forever. Your body, your body might say no, but your mind says go. <laughs> and as long as my mind can stay, can say go, I'll, I'll see what my body can hold up. Good. <laughs> I like to hear it. Well, and I want to let you know too, speaking of competitions, we have a friendly competition coming up on June 23rd. It's our cha charity competition that we do for a walk on water where we just raise money for a walk on water who surf therapy for kids. And it's more of a fun competition. And like last year we did like racing and fins. We had an inflatable contest this year. We'll Ooh. be doing an expression session. So we'll got to get you my alley. That's right up my alley. Where, fun. Where's it's it at? San Clemente Pier. San Clemente? Oh, okay. Yeah, so it'll be a fun day. And just like you said, for us too, it's not really about competition. It's just about getting everyone together, getting in the yeah, water. And it's, and yeah, doing I'd, I'd be up for that, no problem. Yeah, so thanks so much for joining us. And um, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you much. And <laughs> thank you know, you. hope I didn't bore everybody. <laughs> I'm sure everyone loved it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I loved it. Take care. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.